Okay, the only thing different we're going to be doing here is looking at the electron configuration for ions. And it's, it's really common sense what you would expect, except for one little caveat there. And then at the end, a couple of exceptions to uh, the AFA principle. Negative ions. Of course, negative ions means that the atom has gained electrons. Of course, negative ions are called anions. So an example. Phosphorus is atomic number 15, and its electron configuration would be this. If it has a negative 3 charge, which phosphorus often does, it would simply have three more electrons. So as you would expect, we simply add three more electrons. And that would be it, just that simple. Add the additional electrons using the same ordering sequence rules, the three rules we talked about, the off-power principle, Hund's rule, and the Pauli exclusion principle. Positive ions are atoms that have lost electrons. Of course, they are called cations. The key idea here, electrons are first removed from the highest principal energy level. So for example, iron. Iron is atomic number 26, has 26 electrons, and this would be its electron configuration. Iron with a positive two charge has two less electrons, so we're going to need to take away two electrons. But which two electrons? Well, you might think it would be the 3D. But the key idea here is, uh, tells us no. It's from the highest principal energy level. Remember, that's the N equals 1, N equals 2, N equals 3. Well, N equals 4 is a higher energy level than N equals 3. So those electrons are removed first. Remember the overlapping that takes place as you go higher and higher. And so regardless of the fact that the three Ds are added after the 4S, the 4S still belong to a higher energy level. So this would be the electron configuration. And by the way, you might remember from last year, we're talking about kind of, kind of dancing around valence electrons. We're removing the valence electrons. Valence electrons are the electrons, electrons that belong to the outermost energy levels. That's something we'll talk about in our next unit. But for right now, just look to see what has the highest number in the electron configuration, and that's what is removed first. Okay, now iron also can have a positive three charge, so we would have one more electron that we would need to remove here, and at this point, then we would go ahead and remove it from the 3D because the valence electrons have always already been removed. Note, never just write a noble gas alone. I kind of mentioned this last time. For example, calcium, this would be the electron configuration for calcium. When calcium has a positive two charge, you might be tempted to just write argon. You're getting rid of those two electrons, but we don't do that. If we just write an electron, just write the symbol for a noble gas and just walk away, it doesn't give us information that we need. We always want an electron configuration to clue us into what are the last electrons. So what we need to do is go back to the last noble gas and complete from there. And so this would be neon 3s2 3p6. Practice, write electron configurations for the following ions using noble gas notation. And you might want to pause the video, see if you can do this yourself, and then check your answers. But I will begin giving the answers in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. All right, now what I'm doing here in the blue is first just writing the electron configuration for the element itself, not for the ion. So this would be the electron configuration for bromine has a negative one charge, so we simply add one more electron. So this would be our electron configuration. For zinc, this would be the electron configuration for just the atom. Positive two charge, we need to remove two electrons. So remember, when we do that, we remove them from the highest energy level. So the 4s2 electrons are what are removed. 
Again, those are the valence electrons. Cesium, positive one charge, we would lose the 4s1. And remember, we we're not going to just put a noble gas in brackets and walk away. We need to go back to the noble gas before that and then complete it from there. So this would be krypton 5s2, 4d10, 5p6. And last, sulfur, the negative, well, sulfur alone would be neon 3s2, 3p4. The negative 2 charge, it's going to lose. Oh, sorry, it's not going to lose anything. It's going to gain two electrons. Okay, now there's a couple of exceptions to the off-bar principle. Chromium and copper. You learned these last year. I think you might remember this. So first, let's look at chromium. Now, the expected electron configuration from chromium would be this. So this is 4s2 and then 3d1, 2, 3, 4. So we would think that it would be that. But when we look at the emission lines for chromium, when we energize it, when we pass electricity through it and look at the light that's given off and look at the spectral lines, that's not what we observe. We observe energy from different orbitals. So what we find is rather than this, which would be the orbital diagram for that, one of the 4s electrons is actually found in the empty, what we would expect to be the empty d orbital. So one of the four s electrons seems to have moved over here, which means that this is the actual orbital diagram, and this is the actual electron configuration. Now, the reason for this is that this is just a much more stable configuration because it's more evenly balanced out. If you look at the energy level diagram, you'll see that the 4s and the 3d are almost exactly the same energy. So when we look at it as we would expect it, it's a little lopsided. We have the 4s filled, 4d orbitals half filled, and an empty d. And nature often just likes things to be as balanced out as possible. And this is just much more balanced. And this is the actual configuration. Now, well, I was going to say that there are others. Uh, there's a lot others. There's many others, but there's only one more that, that you're responsible for, and that's copper. So copper, you would expect this to be its electron configuration which would mean that this would be the orbital diagram, and it, it, I should say for the last bit of the electron configuration, so the 4s and the 3d. So here we have everything's filled except for one of the d orbitals is half filled. Well, that too is a bit lopsided. The, it would be uh, much more stable if the d was completely full. So you probably guessed one of the 4s electrons is actually found to, instead of being in the 4s, fills the 3d completely. So we end up with this as our orbital diagram, which means that the actual electron configuration is argon 4s1, 3d10. So again, don't beat yourself up trying to say, well, how am I supposed to know whichever ones do this? These are the only two you're responsible for. You can look on a periodic table, not ours, but others, uh, or go, go online, and you can see, uh, you can just search exceptions to the alpha principle and see the others, other ones involved as well. Uh, but again, these are the only ones that you're responsible for. Okay, there is a great tutorial I would encourage you to watch from the IB video tutorial site on YouTube. However, they do mention something. He mentioned something called electron arrangements, and that's been removed from the IB curriculum, so just ignore that. I thought I'd just show you part of the video to kind of give you a sense of um, what it has to offer. It's about 14 minutes long. Okay, let's look at how to work out the electronic configuration for the elements in a periodic table. The IB says that you only need to go up to xenon, atomic number 54. So we're going to ignore this is the F block down here. Uh, although they have asked about that in the past, we keep emailing them and telling them not to. And I'm pretty sure they'll never talk about that again. Yeah. All right, then. That was so, a joke. 
If I was to tell you that and, the final term in the and we will be doing the F block. Uh, let me uh, kind of fast forward here a little bit and show you the uh, when he actually starts doing electron configurations. So it's really he does a really nice job on it. But uh, as he's walking you through this, this is electron arrangements right here. So that's what I'm saying. Just ignore that. That's something that's just no longer used. It has to do with the number of electron, uh, number of valence electrons that we have in each of the energy levels. So just ignore that. But everything else is really good. This goes on and on. And even at the very end, asks you what's wrong with these electron configurations. So it might be something for you to see if you can figure that out. Uh, now, that is, in fact, the end of our, the first half of our unit. Uh, remember, our unit is atomic structure and periodicity. Uh, so we'll be starting periodicity next. But that is the end of today's notes.